Over the last decade, impact investment has grown dramatically. In a 2019 survey, the Global Impact Investment Network identified well over a thousand impact investors. This graphic shows that more than half of them by number are based in the US. This survey covered nearly $500 billion of funds under management, about half of which is controlled by asset managers. But others play an important role too, and from my own personal experience, smaller entities can often act on initiatives that larger ones either cannot or will not. This helps to build real momentum for change. One example of the latter is the School for Life in Uganda, founded by David Everett and Pottinger alum Annabel Chauncey in 2008. Not content with following a traditional path, Annabel started to bring together the idea for the School for Life while she was completing her law degree. Annabel and Dave had met whilst working as volunteers in Kenya, where they saw that education was the only real way to mobilize a community and create a positive and sustainable future. By 2011, they had raised half a million dollars and built the Katuso Primary and Vocational School, which opened that year. Importantly, I remember that they resisted the urging of some donors for the quick wins of just constructing more schools, focusing instead on making the existing school as sustainable as possible over the long term. One part of this has been technology, adding solar panels, provided electricity at low cost, enabling students to read in the evening, something we take entirely for granted, but is entirely life-changing for them. They've also built things like a, a biogas latrine system. Most of all, however, the school has thrived because of a sophisticated approach to engagement with the local community, a true partnership between a variety of different interest groups. Today they have over a thousand students across three schools and employ over a hundred Ugandans. There's more about this story at schoolforlife.org.au. Through my own career, I've witnessed a growing focus on sustainability in the broadest sense. The UN Sustainable Development Goals now come up in conversation almost daily, though the 17 goals only officially came into force in 2016. We've seen more and more financial investors, such as BlackRock, begin to take their, a more assertive approach to their investments. We've seen initiatives such as the RE100 bring together large companies to take simple action to save money and reduce their environmental footprint. But there's still an enormously long way to go. After shocking fires and floods and Arctic ice melts in 2020, the latest environmental horror is the shocking oil spill in Mauritius. Meanwhile, the Black Lives Matter protests continue, reminding us weekly that there are many people in our society who simply don't have equal rights or equal opportunities or equal justice. We still see governance scandal after governance scandal, whether it's in the private sector, the public sector, abusive charities, funds, even the education system. And we still see the politics of ignorance walking on the world stage far too often. All this illustrates that it's more important than ever that capital that is seeking to have a positive impact is deployed as effectively as it possibly can be. And that brings us to the three questions for today. Where is impact investing most relevant right now? What is the impact capital chain and how can this help you to increase your impact? How can asset owners, advisors and asset managers work together to unlock value and unlock projects? As we explore these questions, we'd like this discussion to be as interactive as we can make it. So as we count down to the hour, please take a moment to introduce yourself and your particular interest using the chat function at the bottom of the screen. Please do ask questions too using the Q&A function and we will answer them if we can. To help us explore these questions, we have a wonderful group of guests in a discussion that will be moderated by Stephen Gadecki, founder of Gadecki Consulting. Thank you finally to our sponsors, Pottinger and Hip Investor for their ongoing support. And so from me, Nigel Lake in New York and my co-host Paul Herman in San Francisco, thank you very much for joining us today.